Okay, so let's start. It's three o'clock. So uh, thank you very much for coming to all of you. And let me introduce, although I believe he doesn't need introduction because it's a well-known colleague, uh, Luke Jusens, uh works from several decades on tobacco control, and I believe that uh, only a few words to, first of all, to acknowledge and to thank you, to thank him about uh, for coming to Barcelona. We are discussing projects and so on, but also coming and, and being able to share his knowledge and his expertise on the tobacco control scale that was created by himself, by himself, more than one decade ago, more or less, and has been a, a very important tool in order to control, to monitorize and, and have an indicator uh, about how smoke laws and other measures of cloud control are operating in, in Europe. So thank you very much for coming, for accepting the invitation. And, uh, well, I, I should say, I know Luke for many, many years. He is an expert on cloud control, in advocacy. He has been an advisor, and his advisor for the European Cancer Leagues. We have the director of the European Cancer Leagues Association as well. Thank you, Wendy, for coming also to the seminar. And he has been involved in other organizations in Europe, uh, doing advocacy, doing research. One of his main topics, of his main topics perhaps, is not only the tobacco control scale, but he's very well known for all his work on smuggling. I believe that was the, the first scientific approach to, to smuggling, to have data, uh, smuggling of tobacco, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not of persons, that is, now it's more trendy to smack, to smuggle people from one country to another, smuggling of tobacco. Uh, and, and I believe that from his investigations, there were data, and, and it has uh, had a, a great impact also on, on tobacco legislation in Europe, and he has been advisory not only the European Commission and institutions, but also WHO, uh, the CDC, the World Bank, and, and many other institutions. And even he, from time to time, came to Barcelona, <laughs> to the Catalan Institute of Oncology. That is a, a big one. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I will sit down and let you speak. The idea, as commented, is that you speak uh, if uh, sometimes people have questions, if you accept to be interrupted, we can uh, raise our hands and have the question, or we can have all the questions after the 30 or 35 uh, talk. It depends on how excited will be the, pe the people with you. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much again for coming. It's a honor and also a pleasure to thank you. Thank you. So, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I will give a, a presentation on how we constructed the back control scale. Please, you may interrupt me uh, if you have questions for clarification, you have discussion afterwards, but there's no problem of interrupting me. So the, the Bible Control Scale is more than 10 years old and it's cited by uh, more than 600 articles or reports. Uh, so what is the history? The history is uh, in 2003, INSP asked me to be involved in uh, a proje project on effective tobacco control policies in Europe. So I looked at um, the effective tobacco control policies in 28 European countries. And at that time, there was the uh, World Bank report, the World Bank report of 2000, covering the e epidemic. And there was also a fact sheet. And um, based on literature, it was clear that six policies were the most effective to influence uh, um, tobacco consumption and prevalence. The primes, smoke free legislation, media campaigns, advertising bans, health warnings, and smoking cessation reports. These are also the same um, policies which came up five years later with Empower, and which was become the policy of WHO, and 
you have to six proven policies to reverse the global tobacco epidemic. One is to monitor uh, smoking legislation, smoking cessation, uh, alert warnings, uh, advertising bans, and taxes. The other question was, we knew which policies were effective, but we have to give a way to them. Based on the literature, it wasn't very clear which policies were uh, more effective than another. So we convened a group with uh, Ken Warner, um, a well-known mm -hmm. economist from the US, who worked for the World Bank, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people um, from different parts of Europe to agree, first of all, on the weight of the different policies and how you give scores to different uh, within each policy. So we agreed after a long discussion that the most prominent um, policy would be prices, taxation, followed by smoke free legislation, 22 points, tobacco control funding mainly for campaigns and media campaigns, advertising ban 30 points, smoke cessation 10 points, and labeling 10 points. And so we, um, we developed for the first time um, the, a scoring system in 2000, based on the legislation of the 1st of January 2004, and we looked at the different policies. And we had um, also a ranking, and at that time in 2004, we presented its results in October 2004, Iceland was the number one, Luxembourg was the last one, and you may note that, for instance, Spain was on the bottom, and there was a lot of media attention on this uh, bad position of Spain. And suddenly, which I didn't realize, was that ranking is very important. <laughs> People are obsessed by rankings. Uh, but it was not uh, our initial idea. It was to look at the bank control policy, but then we come up with the ranking, and everybody looks at the ranking. Uh, <laughs> and they wanted not to be in the last place, they wanted to be number one. And then you compare with countries which are similar, which for us is, for Belgium, we look at the Netherlands, we want to be better as the Netherlands, so the, the Dutch. <laughs> um, I guess you will look at, at Portugal, France, uh, uh, Italy, um, so you compare with, with similar countries. Um, we then I worked together with Martin Rowe, Martin Roy is um, a scientist, um, so a real scientist, and I'm an activist and a, a scientist, and he's probably a scientist and an activist, uh, so I needed a real scientist. <laughs> and um, um, we worked on this article, and uh, it took us a while to have it presented, to, to review, to, to validate it, but now it became a scientific tool. Um, we didn't say that we could predict prevalence, but we presented as a way to, to measure tobacco control policies and to stimulate countries to improve uh, their policy. Um, we had the, the different scores um, of different policies. We changed a little bit uh, from the 2006 scores uh, in 2010. So the 30 points, initially we gave 15 points on uh, the price of Marlboro and the price of the most popular price category. And then we took account with affordability with the purchasing power standard. Afterwards, we had a, a better tool, which is the weighted average price. And the weighted average price is Everything which is paid by the smokers divided by the number uh, of cigarette packs and gives the average price of, uh, of a pack of cigarettes. So it's a, a clear uh, message, a clear standard for pricing, um, taking into account the purchasing power standards to correct with affordability. Um, then we had 22 points um, 
for smoke station endpoints on um, smoking at workplace and eight points for smoking um, in bars and restaurants and four for transport and public places. There are also 15 points for tobacco control spending, uh, 13 points for um, advertising then, so for instance here, uh, two for advertising ban on television, uh, two for ban on display of tobacco point, products at point of uh, sales, one point of sales advertising. And then we had on health warnings. And in the first one, we didn't have um, points for plain packaging, but that we corrected in, in 2010. Uh, points for plain packaging, and for the moment, the, in the new edition, there will be two countries, uh, France and the UK, we will have four points for plain packaging. And four, four countries which have adopted uh, plain packaging, but not from the 1st of January of, of this year, they will get their points later on. And then have a scoring system for uh, the treatment of uh, smoking cessation. So the, how do we work in relation to prices? We have the, uh, we calculate that if the weighted average price in an EU average is 10 euros, you get 30 points. And um, that means that Bulgaria receives 30 points if the price would be 4.60, Spain 9 euro 10, Ireland 14 50, Norway 16, Euro 90, and Luxembourg even 2710. Um, so that's, um, we take account with the uh, affordability. In relation to uh, small field legislation, we take account with two elements. One, a country which has the best legislation without smoking rooms and well respected will get the full amount of public points. If it's a, um, a country where the legislation has some exceptions which well respected, then it gets some points but less. So we take account with uh, legislation which is excellent and then the enforcement. But the, the enforcement of legislation was a problem because if you ask people if the legislation well implemented, sometimes you get uh, diverse uh, answers. So now we're using the Eurobarometer survey, and there, for instance, on, on, on bars, they asked the last time you visited the bar, so people smoking inside um, last six months. And so if the percentage is below 25%, it's okay. If it's not, if it's more than 25% seen, uh, it's not okay, then they get less points. With, of course, a problem if the percentage is 23% or 27%. Uh, the Eurobarometer survey is only done with 1,000 people. The sample size is, is limited and sometimes they vary and they don't reflect automatically so precise what happened in the country. Um, so here we explain uh, that we take account for the enforcement with the Europe Barometer Survey. And you see a, a big difference according to the country. Um, so Greece, for instance, has perfect smoke free legislation, but it's not respected. So they, they get uh, for um, smoking at, at workplace only two points from 10. This was then um, the publication in tobacco control, and we saw that um, the, we had four leading countries, and these leading countries have been always been there Ireland, UK, Norway, and Iceland. And for instance, you could um, very well see the difference between. UK and Ireland was only one point, 
that you see that on on price they get 30 points and a smoking ban only one of uh, 22. They had no smoking ban. So if they wanted to improve the score, they have to do something on their smoke fee legislation. That made also the strength of the tobacco control scale that with one table you can see the ranking, but you can also see in which policy you are doing well or not well. Um, so we have the different rankings over the year with the postcards, um, which um, so you, you notice, for instance, there in 2005, Spain was in red, and suddenly, uh, two years later, it was no red. Um, we have the, the uh, ranking comparison between 2010 and 2007. Um, in 2013, we took account with the legislation on the 1st of January 2014, cigarette prices the 1st of July 2013, and the tobacco control budget of 2012. And here again, um, you can see where the countries uh, work well. In 2013, for instance, Turkey was on the fifth place, um, in 2010 of the fourth place, and that was because they had introduced smoke-free legislation, advertising ban, and increased their, their, ta their taxes. And Spain was uh, now on the seventh. So, you can see also um, the evolution of the ranking um, within the years, within the countries. If you look, for instance, at my own country, Belgium, it was 19 in 2004, in 8 in 2007, and then 13. And in 2007, we, we had our best health minister. Um, the same for the Netherlands, had the best score in 2004. And in 2004, they had their best health minister. So, you, indirectly, you can see the political activity based on, on, on the ranking. So, the next result will be presented um, in Porto on the 23rd of March to the um, president, of Porto, uh, president of Porto, and perhaps with your queen, I'm not sure, but she may come. <laughs> So the, the purpose of the tobacco control scale is um, to introduce a new level of systematization in the scoring of tobacco control policies at country level and to encourage comparison between countries and motivation to strengthen these policies. If you look, for instance, at the countries which are, have introduced uh, plain packaging or will inter are interested in introducing plain packaging, they're all, most of them are all in the top 10. Uh, you see that the leading countries um, are really interested to improve their scores and to improve their policies. So what are some comments on, on the different um, categories to indicate for different policies? We believe that the weighted average price is a good indicator of um, price policy because it's the overall that smokers spend on uh, on cigarette tax in a specific country. The purchasing power standards are sometimes problematic for countries like Luxembourg, which it seems to be a little bit too high, 271, compared to the EU average 100. Um, if you go outside the EU, they don't have rated average price, then we take the price of a pack of Marlboro less than percent, so it's uh, not completely the same. One problem, one the most problem is that well, your tobacco is not included because there is no standard. We go to the tables in the EU for cigarette prices, we take the table and include them. There are no tables for your own tobacco. We don't have a Marlboro brand uh, in all things and 
the rate of roll on tobacco is not the same in all countries, which we, and which is also that the exchange rate influence scores and makes trends difficult. Um, at the latest scoring, uh, for instance, Ukraine will lose many, nine points because they have the war and the uh, Fabrika has devaluated. Uh, so, in the comparison, we looked also at the exchange rate of the British pound on the 22nd of June and the 30th of June, one week after the Brexit, and the, uh, the value of the pound decreased by 10%, which is reflected. In, in the prices. Uh, this uh, comparison is good to compare countries, but if you look at the trends, um, you, have, you may have uh, half a problem. And the maximum level of points uh, now we determine at 10 euros. Uh, well, we have to put it somewhere. It could be even 9 euros, could be 11 euros, could be the maximum point. So that's in a certain way arbitrary. Comments on smoke free uh, legislation. Um, so the enforcement is measured by the neurobiometric survey and the sample size is, is uh, low. Our countries outside the EU don't have the neurobiometric survey, so it's difficult to judge what really happened in Serbia or things like that. Um, at the beginning, we made a difference between. Uh, different, um, the smoking rooms, different, very difficult to make smoking rooms and a normal smoking rooms. I, I think it doesn't make sense to make this difference uh, between different sizes of smoking rooms. Smoking rooms are not very good. Uh, and if you look at impact of smoke fee uh, legislation score, you should only look at enforced, whether it's enforced or not. But we take account also uh, with good legislation because we want to promote good legislation. So this makes it more difficult uh, to look at the effect of, of a score on, on prevalence. On advertising, we don't find it some difficult to know what, uh, whether the legislation has been enforced or not, certainly for internet advertising. Um, sometimes the answers of the respondents are not always reliable and you have to check the information when they are answering. We have the budget of tobacco control uh, to our respondents and sometimes they have difficulties to get this information because they have together with smoking cessation budgets and we don't want smoking cessation because we have it already in the score for smoking cessation. Uh, we have two countries which have high scores, Iceland and Switzerland, and they have a lot of money for projects, but actually we don't know whether this um, money is good, well used, so we should have a measurement of, of this spending where it's good. Um, and we have 15 points, but perhaps this 15 points is too high. Um, some general comments. Um, some respondents want to have high score for their countries, some want low scores. Uh, we want only the fair results that happen in their countries. But, um, some respondents never reply. Uh, we sent five emails, six emails. This time we have two out of the 35 we want to apply. And sometimes you need to verify by other sources, such as the database of EU, WHO, Europe, Empower, FCTC uh, database. They have country reports every two years, and they are sometimes very valuable. You go to the website of the FCTC, and you click on the country, and, and it provides uh, the answers. Uh, so it's always useful to verify a different database. The, the question is, um, should we change uh, the scoring? Um, it's not very good to change too often the score because then we can compare, but some people say you should add uh, some things about after the country on industry, the back industry to fill on smoking over areas. Mm -hmm. uh, 
beaches, parks, etc. Electronics here, but that's uh, an issue where there will be new consensus. Um, road your own tobacco or measures against illicit free to come into the countries who have ratified the WHO FCPC protocol of illicit trade. We had initially uh, 28 countries, now 35. Um, how many in the future? We will probably review the scoring uh, in 2019 to prevent new results in 2020. We have to see uh, who will be the next uh, future steering group of the tobacco controls today. And for the moment, we are a lot of brainstorming on um, a website together with this institute uh, to collect all the data of the different reports, literature, uh, interactive maps, etc., uh, to make it easier for researchers and for campaigners to use the data. Thank you.